Join us for two special reality meetings with Bishop Jonah Kaweri this July, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, 4th of July, and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, 7th of July, 2019. Venue, 6 Cedar Street, Hampstead, New York, 11550. For inquiries, call 516-765-0323. You can also follow the meetings live on our social media handles, www.facebook.com forward slash reality meeting, or search for reality meeting on YouTube. are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Join us for our reality meeting every Thursday at 7 p.m. and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at 6 Cedar Street, Hampstead, New York, 11550. For prayer and counseling, call area code 516-765-0323. You can also join us and follow us live on Facebook.com forward slash Reality Meeting or subscribe and watch us live by searching for Reality Meeting on YouTube. Everyone that's here right now, lift off your voice, give God's glory. That we make it here still to today. We are here safe and protected. Glory to Him. Glory to Him. He deserves all the glory. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful meeting. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all and everything you're doing. Continually bless your holy name, Almighty Abraham. We thank you, Almighty God. We praise your holy name. In your only name, Jesus Christ, alone we have pray. Amen. We're going to lift up our voice once again. We're going to thank God. Not just for what he's preparing today, for the work and for exactly who is going to be here today. For the bishop that's going to be here, Lord, for the word that you're putting down into his soul to deposit into our hearts, into our soul. The word that's going to be changing our life, the word that we're taking every day. We thank you in advance for that, Lord. We bless your holy name. We thank you in advance. We glorify your name. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Oh, yeah, she, the man, Shabbat, the Gede, Ling, Gede, and the young, 
lima nugu hidi ya shan ligiri lenge dea ni ya nugu hui mashu wa mali lenge ni nguwa hishi ligiribi bomo ni mangu ya li ya lao we thank you Lord for every person that's here we thank you Lord for everybody that's here for everyone that's willing ready to prepare ready to receive the word ready to receive what you're about to give them ready to prepare to change the way ready to prepare to change their heart ready to prepare to change it Oh shalege lima nugiri basha lingama lima nugiri ya nugiri yesha mali leni ni ali linga nugiri basha baba bakalia linga di hendi di we know there's none like you almighty god we know there's none like you loving god we know there's none like you we bless your holy name we thank you lord oh ye de shida oh we lift our voice we glorify your name we bless your name lord thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus, for this meeting. Thank you, Jesus, for we already meeting. That you make possible for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. You all can sing with me, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lengo no ya mali guru shidi i na na ke ne ke ya o mali ba o bless your holy name holy god faithful god is not like you o i ba shame o i ria faithful god i shame ba ni ri ke shidi ba ani ni ni ya ga no ke ri ke ne he ri lenge he ne anu wishing ma ba mo giri mo ni esha we thank you lord we bless your holy name we give you honor and praise is only you deserve we give you glory. We know you're faithful, Lord. We thank you. Bless your holy name. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, we are praying. Amen. just rise up on our feet. We're going to praise God this evening. Hallelujah. We're going to praise his holy name. Blessings and honor, glory and power, be to the ancients of the From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancients of the All of creation 
bow before the ancient of days. Blessings and honor, glory and power be to the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, we bow before the ancient of days. Every song and every nana. to be glorified he's worthy to be magnified just speak well of him just speak well of him speak in other tongues speaks well of him hallelujah hallelujah he's worthy to be lifted high lord we lift your name up high lord we lift your name up high hallelujah just open up your hearts to him in holy adoration unto his name hallelujah la serie de vos calle heria lara mama se que teria de vos la de si que teria de vos baba la la lo seria al cande heria de vos lord we've come to worship you lord we've come to give you praise lord we've come to adore your name we come to reverence you tonight hallelujah Let's sit here at a bush, but a bush, Kedia Lada Lada Bush, Mamma Mamma Labos, Kedia Lada Lada Bush, Mamma the Hedia de Kedia Lada Lada Bush, Hallelujah, Hallelujah to your name. And we bring to you a sacrifice of praise with the fruit of the leaves. We're giving thanks unto your name. Lord, we bring to you, 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 a sacrifice of praise. With the fruits of the leaves, we're giving thanks unto your name. So I worship you, I worship you. 
with all my heart, with all my heart, I worship you with all my heart, with all my heart. Say, I worship you. I worship you. Lift up your hands with all my heart. Oh, with all my heart. My heart. I lift my hands. I lift my hands with all my heart. With all Everybody say wait. 
with everything within me. I love you, Lord. Yeah. Ooh, you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my heart. Away, away from the noise, alone with you. Thought that 
feels his heart every morning, noon, and night. Oh, he loves me when I didn't care and was patient till I came. For his glory to reveal Say I will worship him I will worship forever I will love forever yeah. This God is too good I will worship him forever God is so good. Hallelujah. 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 Praying. Hallelujah. Let's begin to thank God for today's meeting. Hallelujah. Let's begin to thank God for words that we receive into our spirit today. That those words will take us to the next level of greatness and purpose. Hallelujah. Begin to pray wherever you are. Hallelujah. For every word that will come to your spirit today, those words will transform you by the power of the Holy Ghost. For every word I will receive today from the mouth of God, hallelujah. Those words, 
will cause changes in my life. Begin to pray, hallelujah. For every word that will come today, hallelujah. words that will transform my life by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says our expectation shall not be called short. Hallelujah. Hey, are you expecting today? Begin to open your heart to receive the engrafted word of God. Even with the meekness of your heart. Hallelujah. Begin to pray. Hallelujah. That as the word of God comes to your heart. Hallelujah. That you receive with meekness. Hallelujah. And that word is able to cause changes in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray, oh God, as I've come to receive your word, hallelujah. Your word will catapult me to the next level, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will never remain the same because of the words I received today. Hey, man, I'm a I might have come to church this way, but I'm living a transformed man and woman by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray, hallelujah. That every word that will come out, hallelujah, regede bebeskeba, will be rema to us, hallelujah. Ragada babosekepa. Lord, we give you all the glory, hallelujah. Let's begin to pray for a man of God that will come, hallelujah, to minister to us. Apostle Paul says that they'll pray unto uh, the ministers that all parents be granted unto them, hallelujah. We pray that every word that will come out of his mouth, hallelujah, will be words that will come out with boldness, hallelujah will be words that are inspired of God's spirit, hallelujah. As he speaks the word of God, our lives are transformed, man. I'm a man he speaks the word of God with boldness, huh? It's not apologetic about the word of God. As he speaks the word of God into our lives today, we receive, man, I'm a man, because our heart is like a fertile ground, hallelujah. And we grasp the word of God today in the name of Jesus God. As he speaks, uh, the Spirit of God gives him the right words. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God grants him the right words uh, to say concerning every situation today. Begin to pray, man. The grace and anointing of God has rested upon him. Hallelujah. Therefore, it speaks the right words into our lives. Uh, and our lives, no go down, they go down, skip up, transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Begin to thank God for today's meeting. is a success already. Begin to thank God, hallelujah, for the words that he has granted to our man of God today. Hey, God, words that will depopulate the kingdom of God darkness the words that will bring light into our lives words that will bring healing into our spirit oh lord we give you all the glory begin to thank god for today's meeting begin to glorify his holy name hallelujah for indeed our god has answered our prayers hallelujah for he said in his word that i can do exceedingly Abundant that which you ever think or imagine, according to the power that is at work in us. Hey God, Ababoskeba, blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may have your seat. God bless you. I have a wonderful treasure. The gift of God without measure, or oh, we shall travel together. My Bible and one more time, sing. I have a wonderful treasure. I have a wonderful treasure. The gift of God without measure. Oh, we shall travel together, my Praise the Lord. Now, we have been talking about Bishop since. <laughs> I know you probably will have seen it on the Facebook and all those places, <laughs> how we have been talking about him. And um, I told you guys that you will enjoy him. Hallelujah. 
Now, but before he comes up, I want to play a six-minute video just so that I don't want to underintroduce him and I don't want to overintroduce him. I want to introduce him exactly. Hallelujah. So I'm going to play a six-minute video. I just want you to relax, and this will be the introduction for him, okay? Give me 30 seconds to play. Thank you. Uganda, the pal of Africa, where several people are joining hands to transform the nation, spiritually, socially, and economically, by God's grace, one of the people Uganda is blessed to have is Pastor John Agashpon Kaweli. Hi everyone, uh, this is Jonah and my wife. Gashpon is happily married to Sylvia with eight biological children and takes care of many more children. He's the founding pastor of the big church, Freedom Center. He's traveled to over 20 countries in the world and for over 26 years, he's been involved in pastoring, church planting, building, mentoring, encouraging and equipping pastors and leaders at different levels. In massive crusades and conferences he holds, Pastor Gospel has seen God at work and lives transformed. He is the man behind the gathering of generous annual conference in Uganda. It has to be a growing, a growth mentality in you in order for the church to grow. What he's got a lot to do with mentoring, equipping, and building pastors at different levels, both national and internationally. Pastor Gashburn also spearheads the mentorship of pastor's children while he holds camp meetings aimed at raising a generation that fears God. Pastor Gashburn is also an educator. He's transformed many lives and changed many people through free education programs to the less privileged in his community. Pastor Joanna Gashburn is the founder of the Gashburn Christian Schools. That is, the Gashbon Kindergarten, the Gashbon Primary School, and the Gashbon High School.
My name is Wandaruna Duwamai Juni. I'm from Gashbon Christian High School. I know our school is the best in our community. This is Gashbon Christian School. My school, I'm proud of it because I know that it's the best. I give them better services from our teachers every day, even on Saturdays. The overround, I give them everything that we want from this school. I'm proud of it. I know that it's the best in the whole Uganda. Because of his deep passion and affection for his community, Pastor Gashbon came up with health programs and outreaches like the Selawam Medical Center, which reaches out to many people health wise. As a father and a loving parent, he has also mentored many marriages in his community. He has helped in the transformation and empowerment of many youth in the community. As a father and a loving parent, he has also mentored many marriages in his community. He has helped in the transformation and empowerment of many youth in the community. As he empowers them in the word, and creating job opportunities to many, a slum that once was known to be so dangerous is becoming a place to be. There's no greater joy than being part of a great transformation. For more information about Pastor Jonah Gashburn, contact us through the information provided on your screen. Pastor Gashburn will be coming to us soon to share his experience with God and how big his heart is for his community. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. All right, so I didn't want to over or under introduce him. So that video has introduced him. How many people are ready to be blessed by God today? Hallelujah. I want you to just rise up to our feet. We're going to pray a 30 seconds to one minute prayer. We're going to pray and say, as the man of God will be coming forth here to minister and bless us, that our lives are changed for good. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Basha palada bande, ribo sha antalada ba kipa, mazo da ba ba ye parada manoski, le bara ba sha tana na ma kipa ando sho anda lade. We have a simple heart. La pa ye ba de bo sho tala na mande, rego zum palana de gede ya sha antali paraga dae, rego ja balana ma di parada gade ya sha tala na ba, maso tana na ba di bari gede ya sunde ya le gede ya. Makisha baraba zozon de yaradaba koshki. Reboza bariba son talara bande. Masha palara bande gedi aragados. Le paande shatalara bangi daregedea. Rakozo karogadabo setalia. Oh, we give you all the glory. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now, with a warm, warm welcome, let's put our hands together as a welcome, Bishop Jonah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Joseph, and the entire administration of this church, uh, this wonderful fellowship, for giving me the opportunity to come and share with you the word of God. I again bring you greetings from the Pearl of Africa, my motherland, Uganda. Uh, let us just put our hands to up just for one minute and we say Jesus we thank you father we thank you I continue to ask you father that you open the eyes of our understanding today father may you come and change our focus may you come and touch us in a special way and may us know you better we ask you father to continue revealing Jesus to us as we share your word, let the Holy Spirit paint Jesus. Let Jesus be formed in us, O oh Father. Let us have more of Jesus that may live as he lived and walk as he walked. Continue, Father, to show us the realities of heaven, the realities of the kingdom. As we gather in this reality meeting, we call upon you, Father, that your realities may be manifested tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, anoint my, my accent, Father, that it may be understood by every man and every woman who is in this house today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please grab your seats. 
Thank you very much. I want to, uh, because I'm in America, I'm not in Africa, you please forgive me, I will quickly time myself. <laughs> very important that I don't go beyond. You know, when you preach for so many years, one of the struggles you get sometimes is when you are going to speak, you begin to wonder and to ask yourself, what do I need to speak? And if you are not careful, you may be tempted to speak your mind and not the mind of God. That is one of the challenges of serving for so long. However, it is important and it's great when the Holy Spirit gives you what to speak to your people. Very important. And I believe what we are going to hear tonight is coming right from the mind of God. And it's going to bless you. And you will not regret your coming. <laughs> you go out there thanking God and praising God. And saying, thank God I came. Thank God I came. When in the past years, I used all the time. Uh, when I just entered into ministry, when I was in ministry five, ten years I was pastoring, I, most of the time I wanted, whenever they invited me to preach, to look for a very great message so that I impress people. And as years went on, I got to realize that the greatest gift you can give to people is to tell them the truth. Because it's the truth that sets people free. And I have also come to realize that what makes people different, other people different from un others, is the way they understand the mind of God. The realities of heaven, the way you get to understand the realities of heaven, the realities of the heavenly kingdom, that puts you in a place, differentiates you from other people. And if you want to be different, and to live a difference in life, and to live a legacy, to live a mark in life. Always desire to understand the mind of God. And thank God that you've come today. One of the steps that helps you, the things you do to, to understand the mind of God is to come in fellowship as you've come. And listen to the word of God. It helps you to understand the mind of God. That is what differentiates people. The truth you know is the truth that works for you. The realities you understand are the ones that set you at liberty, that set you free, that give you freedom in life. I want to share something which God has put on my heart. I think so much for this nation and also for the body of Jesus Christ in the entire world. Every nation I've gone to all these years I'm going to, I'm, I'm searching every day. What is the mind of Jesus? And the mind of Jesus is very amazing. Jesus' mind is about people. Jesus loves people. The reason why any church exists, why Jesus places a church somewhere, is people. He loves people. I would like to read a few verses. Turn with me in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. Chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. And let us look at verse... 17 and 18. It says, I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. I love those who love me. And those who diligently seek me will find me. Let's assume Jesus is entered in this room tonight. And is looking at every one of you. From, because Jesus understands the intents of your, our hearts. He knows what is in our hearts. 
He searches the heart. He says, I, the Lord, search the heart. One of the things that God understands better is the heart. That is why the Bible says that the heart is deceitful. Deceitful. That it can even lie its owner. The carry of the heart can be deceived by the heart. That is why God says, I, the Lord, search the heart. Now let's assume Jesus is entered in the house tonight and is looking at your heart and is asking you, do you love me? What will be your answer? Do you really love me? If Jesus is entered here tonight and is looking at you, seated with you, is conversing with you, is asking you, do you love me? Oh, Let's assume you are lying on your bed somewhere, or you're driving your car, or at your place of work, or you're nursing your baby. And Jesus enters in your room and asks you politely, Slivia, Betty, Joan, do you love me? Fabe, do you love me? What will be your answer? Do you really love Jesus? One of the reasons why people don't love people is because they have never fallen in love with Jesus. And if you don't fall in love with Jesus, you'll never understand the realities of the kingdom. However much you attend a reality meeting and you don't make up your mind to fall in love with Jesus, you will never be able to understand the realities of heaven. There are certain things you will miss that will not happen in your life. Do you love Jesus? Jesus says, I love those who love me. I have come to realize that there are levels of loving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That is level one. He loves you, he saves you, you come in the house. Now, when you enter in a house like, you, like you've entered today, you have now to make up your mind. When Jesus wants to love you in a different way, he wants to love you on another level. He wants to love you on a, on a higher level. To show your love, to show you love on another level. He says, I love those who love me. When you begin to love him, love number one was unconditional. He loved us. He died for us. He saved us. And once you step into that reality of love number one, then you need to look for another reality. That's, that's, that's when you make up your mind and you also begin to love. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me. There is a promise there that riches and honor are with him on verse 18. <laughs> every one of us, we struggle, wake up every day, we work 8 hours, 10 hours a week, so that we want to make things work for us, we want to make a difference. We are trying to do everything to become rich, to acquire riches. And when you begin to work, to, to love Jesus, the world around you begins to change. You stop striving you just you stop crying for prosperity you just walk into prosperity you stop crying for promotion you find yourself walking into the reality of promotion because you made up your mind to love him do you love jesus do you really love him? Now, when you love him, there are things that happen around your life. Now, there was an interesting gentleman, one of the senior apostles. I want us to look at, if you can go with me in John 21, the gospel according to John chapter 21. There is an interesting gentleman there.
chapter 21, if you can look at verse uh, 15, 16, 17, and 18. A few verses there. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? Now, this, this, is, a, this is a man, a, 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 an apostle, one of the senior apostles. Jesus meets him and asks him, do you love me? He calls his name. Do you love me? Do you love me more than all this? Now, when you begin to love Jesus, there are certain things Jesus expects you to do. When you enter into that reality of falling in love with Jesus, there are certain things he expects you to do. He tells Peter, he asks him, Simon, do you love me more than this? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. I want you to mark that. Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Now, when a church that loves Jesus looks for opportunity to feed the lambs, Jesus knows that if you begin to love him, you begin to love the children. Lambs are young sheep. The young ones of a sheep, they, they are the lambs. As a church, as a fellowship, when we enter into the reality, these realities of the love of Jesus Christ, we need to ask, when we fall in love with Jesus, we, we need to ask ourselves, are we really expressing doing what Jesus wants us to do? What are our programs for the children? Those young people under the age of 18, what are we doing for them? Jesus begins with telling Peter, if you love me, feed my lambs. And one of the major problems of the world today, and especially for believers today, believers are so busy, especially in the Western world, in countries like America, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, people are so busy that they have forgotten about their children. And the enemy is telling them, go to church, but leave your children behind. Like he told Moses, go and worship me. Pharaoh was telling Moses, you go, but leave your children. And we miss the mark. God is expecting the church to love, to have special programs for feeding children. Not only feeding them with materials, by, by physical food, with food only, but also with spiritual food. Having a special program to teach your children the way you want them to go. How many, when did you last sit with your children to teach them the word of God? When did you last pray with them? I remember there was a day I told all my family it is fasting. The children, the little ones, we all entered into the room. Closed ourselves in. I understand when you do it in the western world they, they will call police for you. <laughs> Thank God for what is happening in Africa. <laughs> so, we prayed. Teach your children don't leave your children to be taught by the televisions in your house. TV will never train your child. iPad will not teach your child. Tablet. Baby shark, baby shark will not teach your children. You need to create a program to teach your children. It is you. God has given you those children to teach them. Remember. Everything the people around you will forget about you, but the people that will stay with you are your children. Even when you have dementia, 
You cannot handle, you cannot, you don't recall, you can't, you, every, you can't wire up everything as you used if you lose your memory and you are in the nursing home. People will forget about you. They will forget about your summons. They will just quote you. They will quote about your preaching, the churches, the ministries you did. But children, your kids, will come there and sit with you. So create opportunity to teach them. How and what will it benefit you to eat the entire world and you lose your own children? What would it benefit the church to win thousands of people and we lose our next generation? The children. Any church that is going to touch and to remain powerful and to leave a legacy is a church that has special programs. That has intentional teachings that Touches children. I have got the privilege. By God's grace. To raise children. Under my house. They are now just 40. I think 42. 40 something. I had 56. And others moved on. But I have seen the power of children. Kids that were this size, grown up, give them 10 years, you see them mature people beginning to talk to you, beginning to reason with you. <laughs> I have young people now in my ministry who are graduates. They were young, baby class, kindergarten, P1, we told them. Some of them didn't even know how to put on their pants. We told them, but now you sit in a meeting and they reason you. In a board meeting, they speak wisdom. God uses children. He tells Peter, if you love me, feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Feed the young ones. We must feed the young ones. True love of Jesus is seen in the way we love the little ones. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. People were chasing them away. He said, let them come to me. True love. When you comprehend and you understand the realities of heaven or realities of the kingdom you begin to love children so as a fellowship as a church one of the things God wants us to do is to love our children to do something for the children to develop special programs to teach children to reach out to kids to set up a special program when we come to church don't leave them behind come with them don't leave them at on tv tv will not teach them will not develop them teach them the ways of the kingdom faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of god if they don't hear it mm -mm, you've lost them i visited a prominent preacher. I got the opportunity to stay in, in their house. This wonderful preacher was full of revelation. When that preacher could stand on the pulpit and preach, my God, revelations and revelations. I got the opportunity to be accommodated in his house in their house and i always stay in my room for long and as i was there i had an argument in the sitting room 
The young man had brought a girlfriend. And we were having an affair in the sitting room of, our mother, of the parents. There. Ay. And the mother was, the parent was shouting, what, you son, what you, what? And the boy stood up. I was standing there watching. Because one, when I go somewhere, one of the things I love to do is to observe people. I look at people. Wherever I go in the ministry, I observe people. <laughs> I think it's about age. I observe people. <laughs> so, and the boy nearly beat up the parent. And the parent cried. I heard the parent saying, God, I wish you can take my life. Why do you leave me to see this? If we don't train our children well, we leave to cry. We leave to regret. As a church, God has called us at such a time as this. It is, these are one of the exciting days to live. I thank God I'm living in these times. This is the time for the church to rise up. The body of Jesus Christ to rise up and begin to fight for our children. To do things that touch our children. To develop programs that handle and teach our kids. Verse 16. He said to him again a second time. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Jesus, he's asking him again. I tell you, Jesus can come in your room. Jesus can appear to you. Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit himself can even come. But Jesus comes to Peter and says the second time, do you love me? 16. Yes, Lord. He said to him, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. You know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. Tend my sheep. Now, Another way love, loving Jesus is seen is by tending the sheep of God. Now, this word tend is the same word that is used, the Greek word that is used for pastor, for men, the one who looks after, who cares for. To tend is to care. When we love Jesus, we begin to care for people. People are looking for care. People are looking and longing for a caring church. I tell you, People in developed countries have a lot of pressure. There are so many things around them. People that live in cities, they have a lot of pressure. So many bills to meet. They have so many challenges. They need care. They need people that are going to care, that are going to love them. Do you care for people? Do you care for the dying world? Do you have any care for your community? What do you think about your community? I tell you, we need to reach a time. We need to reach a level and be like Jesus. Jesus loved people, cared for people because he understood the realities of the kingdom. When he understood that, he went and spent nights groaning and crying in prayer. He, fasting was not a program or problem to him. He missed certain meals. 
if you are still eating 24-7, from January to February, <laughs> you will never see the realities of the kingdom. You need to be a man and a woman of prayer. There is no new method of growing church. <laughs> you cannot find it in your iPad. Growing church is the old method that our great fathers in the Bible used. The method of groaning. Growing churches have groaning ministers, groaning members that are crying, that go and pray and fast for their community. The devil will never give you this community. Will never hand it to you. Take it. You never say, Pastor Joseph, take this community. Ah! Huh? You have to fight for it. Jesus did it. He spent nights in prayer and in the morning he preached with power. He loved. He said to him, tend my flock. Tend my sheep. Care for them. We must develop programs that cater for everyone. 